Once again, special thanks to my friend Tony Tuff for making the thumbnail. Uh, it's not exactly the way the package is, but I mean, it's the same product. And thank you, Julie, for sending it to me. And I hope you enjoy the video, which starts now. Enjoy. Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm back with another review from the awesome package that my friend Julian DC sent me. And these are Auntie's uh, Delicious Moist Steam Puddings with date smothered in a smooth, sticky toffee sauce. It looks like the bread puddings I remember seeing. I had mentioned uh, Are You Being Served when they had that, the Brit come when they had that uh, Christmas party. Never had a pudding like this before at all. I mean, the only thing I've had was just like the regular chocolate pudding. That's pretty much about it. I'm, I guess I'm kind of limited. And there's two of these uh, things right here. Here's one of them. And uh, you see that uh, aluminum foil topping right here. And it says, uh, steamed pudding, sticky toffee. Traditionally steamed to perfection, these deliciously rich and moist individual sponge puddings have been prepared using only the finest ingredients. Cool. Let's see, uh, see where, uh, it says where it's made at. It might have been covered up because sometimes they, with some of the, uh, important stuff, they put a new, uh, seal on it. Yeah, it's covered up where it's from, but that's all right. All right, let's give this a shot. First of all, and thank you very much, Julie, for sending me this. Never had this stuff before. Let's open it up. Wow. What it looks like inside. Maybe I'll put it in a plate so you can see what it looks like. Sticky toffee sauce on it. Very sticky. I usually <clears throat> I would eat it inside here, but I mean just for the sake of the video. And it's right. This is what it looks like right here. Give it a shot. Very sticky sauce. Okay, there you go. And what's that sponge job? I'm going to say right here. Yeah, sponge pudding. It tastes like a uh, sponge cake. With dates in it. That's what it looks like inside. Pretty good. I never had anything like this before. Give a peach which has some dates in it. It's really good. I like it. I like the the sauce on top of it. I like the sponge uh, sponge cake filling with the dates in it. It's delicious. I thought it'd be overly rich. It's really not. It's it's a straightforward dessert. I think I really like. It. I, I give this a nine out of ten. I I think it's really good for INT steam puddings with the sticky topping sauce on it. It has dates in it, and I want to thank you again, Julie, for being so kind to send it to me. I like it real well. I'm going to give you another internal shot. See? It looks delicious, don't it? Fantastic. See, I, I, it's so cool. I get... Never had this before. And um, I said thank you again, Julie. It's awesome. 9 out of 10. I really like it. I thought I'd include a couple movie reviews on here. On Tubi TV, I remember I complained about Tubi TV not being that good because uh, the free internet channels usually have commercial breaks in it, and uh, like Fright Flicks and Popcorn TV, but Tubi TV has twice as many commercials as those other two. Like, you get a commercial break like every, once every 10 minutes, there'll be like six commercials. Whereas on Fright Flicks or Popcorn Flicks, there'll be either one, two, or three commercials during a commercial break. But no, there's usually about six, sometimes more, on Tubi TV. Well, anyway, I saw two films I've been wanting to see. Both came out in 2001. Both came out with uh, with bad box office. One was Outright Flop, 
And that one's called Lucky Numbers with uh, John Travolta and Lisa Kudrow. And it's about it's set in Harrisburg back in 1988. And it's uh, about a plot for them to uh, oh, rig the, the Daily Lottery, for the PA Daily Lottery, you know, to get money and, you know, rip off the lottery. And it's really funny. I really enjoyed this one very much. I mean, this was a complete bomb. I was surprised because it's actually a great, great movie. I really, really liked it. And it's weird because they went on with the whole thing about rigging the lottery, the daily lottery, because there was a movie made back in, what, 86? 85, 86, uh, I think, with Michael Keaton called uh, The Squeeze. And I saw it about three or four times, but I barely remember it. It's not the most memorable movie in the, movie in the world. It's somewhat similar about ripping off the lottery and rigging it. And uh, it was Michael Keaton, Ray Dong Chong, John Davison, and uh, oh, Meatloaf was in it. And that and now I like that movie too, but that got a little no fan for at all. But if you get a chance, definitely see Lucky Numbers with Lisa Kudrow. Uh, also, Michael Moore is in that, believe it or not. And also uh, Stanley Tucci, Michael Rappaport. I'm a big Michael Rappaport fan. He was really good in it. It's an awesome movie and very, very funny. And they have, uh, in a smaller role, this one uh, assistant police uh, policeman, his name is, uh, his real life name is Daryl Mitchell. I actually saw him and uh, we went to Junior's Laugh, Last Laugh. He's a comedian who's been in a lot of movies. And we actually saw him perform. He was right before Mark Gross. I don't know whatever happened to Mark Gross, but he Mark Gross was funny. But in the middle was Darren, Daryl Mitchell. And he was really funny. And we, like I said, we saw him at Junior's Last Laugh in Erie a long time ago. Now, that was cool. I met a celebrity there. And uh, like I said it's a fantastic movie. I give that full on 10 out of 10 for lucky numbers. Second movie was Crocodile Dundee in, in Los Angeles. I mean, I really liked the Crocodile Dundee movies because I saw the first one in when I was still in high school. We rented it. It was a big blockbuster hit that summer. I mean, a big hit. And my dad was really excited to rent it. And he rented it. He was disappointed. I thought it was a decent movie. I barely remember it. I don't even think my dad watched the whole thing. I, I watched it. I... I only watched it once when we rented it. My dad said he, would, he didn't like it at all. But I, I enjoyed it. And I thought it was a decent movie. And then uh, when I was in Fort Gordon, Georgia, in AIT, when I was in the Army, I saw a second one. I'm a big fan of the second one. The second one's my favorite. So when this one came out, I mean, I thought I'd want to see it. But I mean, I knew ahead of time that it's probably going to be lame. And the first... 10, 15 minutes are actually pretty good. And then after that, it starts going downhill fast. It's lame. It's not even funny. And, you know, they are uh, they start out in Australia again. And uh, his uh, Lisa Kozlowski uh, gets a call from, I think, her dad. And he owns a newspaper. And he said that one of the newspaper guys died. And he, he needs to find a replacement. And he wanted to know if she could come in and fill in for a couple weeks. And she was left with some story about uh, a corrupt movie company. And the stuff with the movie company was so boring, especially with scenes with her in it. And then, like, halfway through, you know, you see another one of uh, Crocodile Dundee's buddies come down. And it kind of gets rid of that boring part with her in it. But, I mean, those scenes are lame, too. Every scene in here is pretty much lame. And then the eventual confrontation with the bad guys is it's just, oh, it's beyond boring. It's... Not even inspired. It looks most of the movie looks really cheap too. Uh, I like the part when he looked at a painting. He said, "Who's that?" And he said, "Picasso." And he said, "Well, I I've been uh, I might drink a little bit. I never been that hammered to paint. But I kind of laughed at that a little bit. But I mean, it was so lame. I have to give that a maybe a four out of ten, just because I like the Crocodile Dundee, Dundee franchise. But there's no reason to watch that. If you're not uh, seeing it, go see it. But, I mean, there's no uh, reason to see it more than once. I saw it once, and that was enough. I, I, I could go and see the first original Croc Dundee, which I've only seen once, again, or the second one again, because I, I love the second one. But, uh, there you have it, my reviews of Lucky Numbers and uh, Croc Dundee in Los Angeles, and my review of the really good Auntie Steam Pudding, which I, I didn't know... What to think? I thought it'd be maybe too rich or too sweet, but no, it's well-balanced.
It's very good. And then thank you again, Julie, for being so kind. Julie in DC for being so kind to mail me this stuff. It me it means a lot, you know. It's cool having friends like you, and I really enjoy. It. I'm glad we're friends. Thank you, Julie. And until next time, bye. Please take care. My leader. I changed my uh, avatar to that uh, thing that Tim did. It might take 24 hours to get make it the get to go and stuff. But I changed that too. All right, take care.